Hola, ¿cómo estás? Ay, that's my homie to Andy. Mira, that's my homie Gonzalez over there. Make this video break 10,000 likes, I'll give one of them away. So Arcturus sent me a package. They sent me a package even though I made a review like this about one of their other AKs. And yet here's a 20 pound package and they said whatever's in here is something I'm gonna absolutely love. Now from what they tell me, they want to be the absolute top tier company at making AKs for any price point. So I can't imagine this being an M4. My only real guess is that they heard that I wanted a Centaur B from the grapevine, so they decided to send one over. I say this, but I'm pretty sure whatever title or thumbnail I've made for this video completely destroys whatever surprise I'm trying to build up here. So let's just rip into this box and see what's so freaking important about it. But first, I want to thank y'all for 239,000 subscribers. I really do appreciate it. All right, so I had to do a lot of messaging and send a bunch of emails to get an idea of what's inside this box. And Arcturus was happy to fill me in. After all, this is one of their prototypes. That's when you know some companies have trust in me. So this is the Arcturus AK-12, an electronic trigger unit version. Yeah, Arcturus is getting serious. Opening the cardboard box, you get everything laid out like the two magazines, one being a high cap and one being a variable mid cap. Do you want a 130 round mag? Done. Want only 30 rounds? There. Done. Now load it up. We also get a rear sight and an all black aluminum flash hider slash muzzle brake. Thank you. Do you know how much I love seeing all black flash hiders included in boxes? VFC, ICS, GNG, everyone should be doing this. I hate seeing those stupid, ugly, all orange flash hiders attached to every gun I get in the US, especially on replicas like on my M14s. But the last package in here has all the rest of the goodies inside of it. Again, this is a prototype, so this stuff might change around a bit, but I got a quality control certification, a control breakdown guide in English, an Arcturus logo magnet, a PVC patch, a coaster, all right and these two programming guides for the ETU. Keep these if you get them. These are gonna be very important later. It's even recommended that you peel these stickers off and stick them to an ammo box or a toolbox that you take with you to games, just in case you forget how to make ETU adjustments. With all that out of the way, besides the unjamming slash cleaning rod that they threw in here and the silica gel packets that they told me not to eat this time, we focus our attention on both this Arcturus AK-12 prototype and this, the same exact LCT AK-12 that I reviewed a while back. Comparing the two rifles' weights, we see that the LCT comes in at 8.7 pounds and the Arcturus comes in at 7.46 pounds. And then the magazines were also weighed. The LCT is closer to the real weight if that matters to you, due to the outer barrel and the muzzle brake being made from steel, while the Arcturus parts are made from aluminum. Everything else from the bayonet mount, front sight, gas block, gas tube, receiver, dust cover, apart from the top pick rail, the selector switch, mock bolt carrier, trigger guard, magazine release assembly, and even the rear sight are all made from steel. The polymer parts consist of the handguard, stock, and the pistol grip like they should be but I'll say that the LCT furniture feels a bit more dense. The pistol grip does look more correct, but it's now slicker, and that issue where you'll bend a bit of the stock if you try to fold it when it's fully collapsed is gone. Arcturus added the correct cutout in the stock where it pivots. The numbers along the buffer tube are gone though, and I'm not sure if this was intended, but there's no need to ever use the release lever if you fold the stock. It doesn't really hold the stock like it should at all. I thought I'd just point that out. Keeping with the stock for a bit longer, the thick rubber butt pad is back and the wobble that I had with the LCT stock is gone. The Arctora stock is actually really tight on the buffer tube. You get the same five stock adjustments on the buffer tube, the same QD sling slots, the butt pad comes off the same exact way to give you space for a tool set or an extra hidden battery, but the pads aren't interchangeable. Up front, you might notice that the muzzle brake isn't straight on the Arcturus. That's my decision to have it like that for this overview. It's too tight out of the box, and I grind the steel and aluminum together when I try to fix it. And since this isn't my rifle, I'm just going to leave it like this. Under it, you do get 14mm counterclockwise threads for any standard muzzle device you'd like to add on. But if you do want to use the correct device, then you'll want to screw on this steel thread protector. For the gas block assembly, the front sight is now taller but still adjustable for height. 
The ring for the sling still swivels around easily, aiding with sling placement, and this pencil-thin outer barrel is turned here. I can't tell if it's like that on the real rifle from photos, but I kind of like it. The gas block plug is now easier to remove, but for a good reason. Skipping ahead, if you fold the stock and pivot open the dust cover, you can use the plug to remove the truly quick-release spring cover and guide from the back. Now, I won't be doing this or taking the gearbox out to examine it, as, again, this is a prototype, and Arcturus asked me not to do that. But you can expect to see that stuff if I ever get the fully released ETU version of this gun. The handguard is pretty much the same exact thing. High strength polymer that shouldn't break under any normal airsoft adventure. But the dust cover release lever is where things finally make this Arcturus stand out. Flip this piece up, pull it out to this point, and now just flip the rail dust cover up like an AKS 74 use. Right away, good on you Arcturus for including Dean's connections with this ETU AK-12. That's something else I'd like to see more companies start doing. For battery space, the space inside the gas tube should be good enough for a thin lipo stick like this one. And that pivoting dust cover really helps in swapping batteries. That was a huge gripe with the LCT AK-12 that actually pissed me off so much during the review. The hop-up on this prototype is another interesting development because it looks like our Taurus wants to do away with the old school slider hop-up that most AKs come with. This large plastic dial may not click as it's turned, but it's not too loose or too tight. It's just right. Even if it wasn't, then I could just adjust it myself with the Allen screw at the top. Closing it all up again takes less than 10 seconds when you know the routine, which is great for us because I need to show you guys the selector switch and the trigger on this thing. Right next to how it's nearly impossible to screw up reloads with this AK-12, thanks to the magwell spacer inside, these two controls are my favorite altercations to the AK formula. First off, the selector isn't welded to the receiver like the LCT was. What I mean is that I can actually do this now. Just the way this is, is better than the adjustments that I made on my LCT AK-12. And Arcturus didn't just stop at putting a correctly marked two round burst slot on the selector's path. It works now. So it's safe, full auto, two round burst, and semi at the very bottom. And it's very responsive thanks to that ETU. AKs tend to have pretty mushy triggers, but that isn't the case with this rifle. I'm not done here though. There's a lot that the ETU can do, and that's where these two charts come in handy. But even then, I'll admit I was still really confused. I had to read a lot of stuff to figure out how it all works because, well, you get a lot of options. Pre-cocking, active braking, binary trigger setups, rate of fire reductions, trigger sensitivity, lipo alarms, the list goes on and on. An LED inside will show you what you're doing with different colors flashing on the final product. But even now, I'm really impressed. I didn't think I'd need to read pages of instructions before setting up my airsoft gun, but if you want to make the selector switch and trigger fit your playstyle, then go right ahead. It feels like if you took all the technical advantages that make ICS, GNG, Classic Army, and Gate great and added them together, you'd get this. Pre-run really did their homework. Where the LCT might be more realistic to the real thing or built like it can be thrown through a car window, the Arcturus model easily blows it out of the water with the tech inside and modern airsoft altercations. It's not built like an NPO or an Inokatsu in terms of construction. Not to say that Arcturus is built like a house made of wet toilet paper, but it's definitely made to outperform. Screw blowing the LCT AK-12 out of the water. It sunk it and it now sails over it. This really excites me because I want to know what Arcturus might be doing later on in the future. Maybe some new RPKs or some other Russian weapons, an AN-94. I know someone they could hire if they want to make that happen. Maybe we might see a Galil? I don't know, but I can only hope that they'll let me continue to work with them if they have more stuff like this coming out in the future. But what about the price range or when this ETU AK-12 will be on the market? Well, you can expect to see the price tag somewhere in the mid 400s, and it should be releasing in the second quarter of 2021. And the only things that can really show off now is the chronograph readings and the range, but those two points are almost guaranteed to change up as this rifle is being worked on. So take whatever you see at the end of this video with a grain of salt. But after what you've seen here and after what I've said, what do you think about this Arcturus AK-12? Is it worth it or what could make it a better rifle? 
Arcturus really wants to be at the top of people's list as the best AK manufacturer for performance, but what is it going to take to get there? If you have anything to say, then now is the time because they will be reading the comments. And with that, I think I'll wrap things up here and say thank you to Arcturus for making this unboxing and overview come together, especially my friend Toby who worked with me personally. I also need to thank all the US Airsoft channel members who directly support the channel by simply being members, like Sailing Ant B, Kiwi Spartan, Western Gilbert, The Sybil, and everyone else you see on the screen. Maybe consider becoming a member today if you like to get a shout out in every single video or to enjoy exclusive perks. I appreciate anyone who looks into doing so. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I'll be sure to see you all next time. So what would make a good target for this Arcturus AK-12 ETU? How about a birdhouse that's filled with hornets? We're going to take it down anyway, so I can destroy it all I want. Let's just throw this straight into full auto and have a little bit of fun. You still can't feather a trigger like on some other M4s out there. Maybe you can. The trigger is just really, really nice. All right, so we're here at about 150 feet now with 0.28 gram BBs with a torso sized target down there. Uh, there's a very slight wind, so let's just see what the Arcturus AK-12 ETU can do. Okay, making a little bit of adjustments for how poorly I adjusted the hop up. 150 feet isn't really much of a challenge. Uh, the wind has died down since I started shooting, but if I could actually put a sight on this and see where my BBs are going and maybe adjust the hop up a little bit more, 150 feet, no problem. 200 feet, and we'll see when the final release comes out.